If you're looking to take your cinematography to the next level, you need to start using wide angle lenses. Whether you're shooting a commercial or capturing landscapes, mastering wide angle lenses can unlock a whole new world of creative possibilities. In today's video, I'm diving into how I use wide angle lenses and how you can use them for your work. Stick around to the end because I'm gonna be going over some techniques that I use that make my images feel larger than life without losing that cinematic feel. Wide angle lenses are great for capturing more of the scene in a single shot, making them perfect for landscapes, establishing shots, or showing a relationship between characters and their surroundings. These lenses typically range from 14 to 35 millimeter, offering a wide field of view that makes the scene feel more spacious and immersive. One of the coolest things of wide angle lenses and what I love to use in my work is how they exaggerate depth. Objects close to the camera look larger while the background appears stretched, which creates a sense of scale and makes shots feel more dynamic. We're gonna break down a few scenes where I use the new DZO 14 mm Arliss Prime and show you my thought process as a cinematographer. When it comes to commercial work and how I like to use wide angle lenses is an establishing shot. I generally like to set up my widest at the top of the day or when the lighting is the best because lighting a wide shot is one of the hardest things that you can do as a cinematographer because so much is in the frame and there's so much that you have to consider when building depth. And the first thing that we're gonna start off with is context. What exactly we are shooting? In this case, we are shooting a game of cornhole. I don't know if a lot of people know cornhole, but it's a game of tossing bean bags, and this is, we're up at a cottage. And I also want to introduce that we are at some place that is special and also a visual cue that tells that we're actually playing in a game. So this now can split up into the actual game that we're playing, which we can see in the background, and then a sign that attributes to that. So whatever is in the foreground. And I'm just gonna say that this is the sign. So this gives me my context and when I'm analyzing or scanning a scene of how I can get an establishing shot. You can see that the technique that I'm using to give me this establishing shot is using the rule of thirds. I have my main thing that I want the viewer to focus on, obviously it's stretched across the almost the center to the third, right here in this first third, so this is my focus. And then in the background on the second third, which is just very pleasing to the eye, I have the action that is actually taking place. I like to have something in my foreground, especially with a wide angle lens, just to exaggerate the depth and make it feel larger than life. And in the background, I actually have the action of what is happening. What is this sign actually talking about? It is a golf course and this is for obviously cornhole. So this is what I love to do when first making establishing shots, using composition to build my story as well as using that to build my depth and interest. The next shot in the sequence, I like to use this as a two shot to kind of explain the story even more that this is a game with friends and family and then the family includes the dog and how friendly and how tight-knit this community is. So again, I'm just using that same rule of thirds when it comes to actually composing my image. I have my main interest here, and then in the other third, almost close to the center, we have the group of other friends who are playing against them in the background here. Another thing that I like to do, especially when getting these low angle shots, besides going on a tripod or getting a different vantage point, I really like to set my camera on the floor or a sandbag or anything that can really kind of manipulate the camera. And in this case, I always like to give it a Dutch angle. Whenever I do these, or especially when I'm working with clients and a director, I like to get a safety of actually leveling my horizons. But I feel like a Dutch angle, when especially working on the ground, just works really well for this. And then just if we're talking about composition, everything just leads to what we are supposed to be focusing on and utilizing all the leading lines in the scene here to really tell a story. Everything is pointing at the gentleman in the background, but also I have the dog in focus. So it's like, I see the dog, but I also see everything that's happening in the background. And these are things that I look for as a cinematographer. The next way I like to look at things, especially when it comes to establishing shots, is looking at my environment and utilizing it to its maximum potential. How can I build more interest? That is the art of cinematography. And we have so many tools in our toolbox to do that with depth, composition, lighting, and art. There's just so many things that we can do. And I did that in two techniques here. The first build is building a frame inside a frame. And this is something that I love to do. And I just looked up at this in section of the stairwell here. And I'm like, oh, I could just shoot over the railing and use my tripod. But I'm like, ah, the stairwell really tells the story of what I'm trying to focus on here, which is the group of friends getting into the hot tub. 
This is my main focus. So how can I frame this in between something to add more to that focus? And that's exactly what I did here with the stairwell. And then we just have so many things that just tell the story of where we're actually looking at. We have the stairwell that leads all the way down here around this path and the beams are light of our helping as well. And this path eventually leads to where we're supposed to be focusing. So I'm looking for all of these intersecting lines and what naturally happens in the environment and just framing with that so I can get the most interesting image to tell that story. And the last kind of weapon in my arsenal here is when I ask myself is what are we shooting? I noticed that there were a bunch of leaves around the property as we are going into fall. So this is something to tell even a deeper story of the time period that we're in relative of the year. So there actually wasn't a lot of leaves up here. So I just took some, I went into the forest, found a bunch on the floor, got some different color ones and placed them all along here to tell that story even more. And as well as just add more color and interest, contrast and depth into the image with all these colors here. Sure, the shot would work by itself, but I like to take it to the next level, especially when it comes to context and the story that I'm telling. This next shot is the same thing that we we're talking about before with building interest with your in your frame by using the frames that are actually there. So what my main action and what I'm looking at is I have a group of friends that are out there and I told them to swim in a specific direction so we could get this all lined up. And then I have another person jumping off this dock here out towards them. Obviously, it doesn't make sense if we're looking at where the dock is relative to everything else. And then I'm on another level where I have all this in the frame. So if we're kind of drawing a top down here to kind of see how I set this up is I was looking at how can I establish the most amount of depth in my frame. And this is the edge of the dock. And those are the two things there of the ladder that are coming up. And then there's a boat here. So basically, I knew that I had to shoot out into the lake, but I'm like, hmm, how can I take this another step forward? And then I'm like, ah, I can shoot through here and get the ladder up in the frame. That could be interesting. I could have somebody climb out and that would work for another shot. But I'm like, I want even more depth. I want to tell even more story that there is a boat or there's something that they have to use to get to this cottage specifically. And that's exactly what I did by building another layer. So I have my background. I have like kind of two mid grounds that we're supposed to be focusing on, which is the person diving in and the friends in the background there. And then I have the dock and then I have the foreground of the boat and everything that's going on here. So I look in that foreground, I see what I can position myself to actually get that. And we are now building another frame with inside a frame, which just is very pleasing when it comes to building a composition. So if you can see here that I'm building with my camera right position right here, the maximum amount of depth and interest by pointing out there. Obviously, if this was a regular person, they would just jump off the dock this way and they'd be swimming over there. But I purposely positioned them to build the most amount of depth and interest. And that's what you have to do when working with actors or blocking anything. They're not just gonna show up and sit in one place and then you have to figure out. You have to kind of put them in the right place as a cinematographer and make those suggestions like, hey, I think that we're gonna have more interest here because the room is going to be larger and everything is going to feel larger and we have a lot more opportunities to build a story within this rather than just the actors blocking. The last thing I want to talk about when it comes to using wide angle lenses is how you add motion to that. And I love to use wide angle lenses handheld and just running through a scene to get the most dynamic movement. And that works a lot. But a lot of people are scared to use pans and tilts in their shot because it's so wide and you're already relying on so much of composition. How can I move that because I'm already perfectly composed to get this shot? If I just look at this here, it's just like ah, I would back up and then get the sign in focus as well as get the breakfast that's going on here. But I wanted to sh give you a showcase on how I use motion and wide angle lenses specifically for commercial work. This is a very commercial feeling and establishing shot and wide angle lenses are usually associated with commercial work. And yes, I wanted to get this motion towards the table here to tell the story that we're in this cottage called Long Days and everybody is enjoying a nice, beautiful breakfast in the sun. But I could just do a simple pan and scan and just go across the image while everybody's sitting there or do a simple tilt up. But that is generally really not enough when you're trying to catch a viewer's attention and make this feel larger in life. And the way I did that is a technique I love to use, which is called motivated movement. 
It's the same thing with motivated light with the sun and putting another light in there. My movement from the camera is motivated by somebody's action. In this case, it's the female talent coming from the cottage as well as the dog following that that just entices this movement to happen over here. I wanted to have a close up on the sign that made it feel larger than life, but also establish a nice breakfast and a nice really meal that's happening over here. And I wanted to pan across that and I'm like, ah, I need some movement here just to make it feel more natural and just more exaggerated. And I feel that this helps a lot. And I love to do this technique in my work. I feel like the most intimidating thing when it comes to setting up an establishing shot or a wide shot, and especially going on a lens this wide, is that you're going to be seeing everything in frame. And you have to basically cheat a lot more. You have to do a lot more. And you basically have to set up a lot more because you're seeing so much. And this is something that I was very scared of and very not confident in because there was so much work that I had to do. One thing that I realized is as a cinematographer, the first line of defense or tool in my toolbox is learning how to compose, learning how to use the basics when it comes to a golden ratio or the rule of thirds, or just using those tools to give you a pleasing image off the start that you can work with, that you can start getting excited about. If I just started center framing everything and not using the rule of thirds or putting anything in the bottom third, it would get very intimidating very fast and everything would break down. So I like to use composing as the first line of defense and these techniques specifically and I hope these can be applied to your work. If you guys are interested in videos like this where I break down focal lengths as well as techniques, let us know in the comments below. Subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next video.